Gemini is the AI source that is gonna change everything. I am beyond excited about Gemini, and the latest news indicates that its release is right around the corner. Gemini could be a game changer, and not just for Google, but the entire AI industry. But is it everything that it says it's gonna be? Let's find out. So Google's latest AI project, Gemini, is a large language model, or LLM for short. And it's basically a giant brain being trained on a massive data set of text and code. This includes anything from books, articles, images, videos, audio, and other types of data. This information is fed into a machine called a transformer. And no, not like a Michael Bay production. These transformers allow LLMs to learn complex relationships between words and phrases and to identify patterns in the human language. Once Gemini is trained, it can use this knowledge to do all sorts of cool things like fact checking, problem solving, answer open ended, challenging or strange questions. It can help engineers write code, generate unique images. It can also improve efficiency in industries like customer service, healthcare, finance and education. And it could aid medical professionals in diagnosing diseases, developing treatment plans, plans, and even predicting health risks, and so much more. With its ability to process multiple types of data simultaneously, and the size of its data set, it should have more informative and natural conversations than other LLMs out there. So it's actually said to be built as a universal personal assistant. And that's just the beginning. It's basically ChatGPT on steroids. So where did Gemini come from? I'm glad you asked. So ChatGPT was released in November of 2022, which was the wake up call that Google needed to up their game. They immediately increased their investments in AI research and development. And shortly after they launched their own chatbot called Bard. Bard started having hallucinations and Google's stock took a major hit, but Google didn't give up on Bard. They ended up giving it a major upgrade and now it's neck and neck with ChatGPT. In fact, some people are saying that Bard is even better than ChatGPT and Google still isn't satisfied. They want to build the best AI chatbot in the world. So they started working on a new project called Gemini. And I also think that Bard got a major upgrade today, so I'm really excited to see what it's capable of now. And tech giants like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Meta are all competing to develop the best, fastest, and most affordable AI tools out there. So Gemini will combine technology from GPT-4 and techniques used in AlphaGo, which should make Gemini way more powerful than ChatGPT. So how does Gemini compare to other AI models? Well, I'm glad you asked. So Google's main competitor in the AI market is OpenAI. OpenAI is a nonprofit research company that was founded in 2015 by Elon Musk and Sam Altman. OpenAI developed ChatGPT, which is currently free to use and sits at a maximum of about 3,000 words per prompt. Its knowledge does cut off after 2021, which means that it's not currently connected to the internet and not able to give accurate current event information, giving ChatGPT limitations on what it can and can't do. GPT-4 or ChatGPT Plus gives you priority access and faster response times along with the ability to access the internet via plugins. It has a limit of 4,000 words at a time, but in order to use GPT-4, you do need a monthly subscription of $20 per month. ChatGPT has been the most popular AI chatbot since its release. However, there's some new blood in the market. Anthropic, the AI company backed by Google, launched its own chatbot in March of 2023 called Claude. A second version of Claude called Claude 2 was released in July and is currently free to use. It allows up to 25,000 words and will reset every eight hours. Claude 2 is trained on data from the web from early 2023 and is not currently connected to the internet. Although, it has been connected significantly longer than ChatGPT. Claude is one of ChatGPT's most powerful competitors to date, and Claude has recently released Claude Pro, which gives users five times more usage than its free version, and you can subscribe for $20 a month, which competes with GPT-4 subscription. Another one is Bing Chat, which is connected directly to Microsoft Bing and is also free to use. But even though that it's connected to the internet, Bing Chat has been prone to unusual outbursts and factual errors. So be careful if you're using that one. Google Bard was released in March of 2023 and is currently free to use. And Bard has an edge over ChatGPT in answering current event questions because it's integrated with Google's real-time search index. In a decrypt test, Bard actually outperformed ChatGPT in translation speed and accuracy. Technically, Bard currently isn't better than ChatGPT, but that's because Google Bard is still in the experimental phase and Google likes deploying updates slowly. However, I have a different opinion. I used to use ChatGPT all 
the time. And last night, I decided to test BARD and ask it questions that only it can know from surfing the internet. So I asked it what the outcome was from the US Senate meeting on September 12th about AI, and I was really impressed on its response by providing me with exact details on who was there, what happened during the meeting, and the outcome, which I'll go over later on in this video. Obviously, I went to go fact check it, and it was dead on. I think that's pretty darn impressive if you ask me. Gemini is said to be the most powerful AI on the market by outperforming other AI models in several key areas. It also has an advantage because Google is feeding Gemini transcripts from YouTube videos to train it. This will allow Gemini to provide advice based on videos. It'll be more powerful, versatile, creative, accessible, and even designed to be easier to use. I'm kind of a big deal. Even for people who don't know much about AI. Overall, Gemini should be a more reliable and accurate source of information. With Gemini still under development, it is hard to truly compare to other AI models, but I have no doubt that it'll live up to its name. Google has their hands in everything. They have Bard, Claude, and Gemini, which are all designed to compete with ChatGPT and other AI models from OpenAI and Microsoft. These tools have the potential to revolutionize the way that we use AI. Google is taking a slow and steady approach to AI development, and it's unclear when we'll actually see these tools widely available. But don't get it twisted, because Google's definitely going to try to dominate the AI space, for sure. One thing that I did like with ChatGPT is that it integrated with my email. I'm hoping that Gemini will come up with something even better for emails, like organization, prioritizing them maybe. I just know that my emails need a little TLC. I know that there are other platforms out there, but I don't really trust a lot of them. I've tried a couple, and they weren't really what I was looking for. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know, and I'll be happy to try them. Once Gemini is released to the public, it has the potential to become the most dominant generative AI solution on the planet. This is because Gemini is much larger and more powerful than previous language models. And it's not just Google with Gemini, Meta also has something in the works too. So even though there's a lot of great things with Gemini, there's also some things that could go horribly wrong. So should we be scared of Gemini? Rapid advancements in language models have alarmed many AI experts, including some creators of the algorithms. They worry that this technology could be used for malicious purposes or become difficult to control, and it could accidentally or deliberately destroy humanity. The creators of these systems are saying that. That's really scary. Some experts have even called for a suspension on the development of more powerful algorithms to avoid creating something dangerous. The CEO of DeepMind and the CEO of OpenAI joined other high profile AI figures in signing a statement warning that AI might someday pose a risk compared to nuclear war or a pandemic. Artificial intelligence pioneer Jeffrey Hinton resigned from his position at Google to be able to freely express his concerns about how AI could negatively impact the world with fake images, videos, and text online, which can deceive and confuse people. He is also concerned about AI affecting jobs in the future, saying that it could easily replace personal assistants, accountants, and translators. The unexpected behavior of AI is also a major concern. Gemini will likely have a major impact on a wide range of industries, for example, Gemini could be used to create new forms of entertainment, such as interactive movies, stories, it can automate tasks in customer service, healthcare, and it could also help scientists and researchers make new discoveries. And while it all sounds fine and dandy, this could potentially put a lot of people out of work. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, told US Congress earlier this month that if technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Governments worldwide are scrutinizing over the safety of AI, and China and the UK have both taken steps to regulate the AI industries. Google, Microsoft, and other tech companies have met with Biden's administration and committed to developing safe, secure, and transparent AI technology. The US Senate, along with Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and Mark Zuckerberg, have recently held a meeting on AI safety where they discussed benefits of AI, such as the ability to improve healthcare, education, transportation, and it also could be used to make scientific discoveries in areas like health and climate change. Elon did say in the meeting that it's very important for the future of civilization. Musk also told reporters right after that that there's some chance above zero that AI will kill us all. It's low but there's some chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. I see you, Elon. There was no concrete legislation, but they'll continue to hold hearings and roundtable discussions on AI. It's important to be aware of the potential risks of AI so that we can try to mitigate them. By doing so, we can ensure that Gemini is used for good 
and not evil. The CEO of DeepMind said that if done correctly, Gemini will be the most beneficial technology for humanity ever, which could lead to Gemini being the most dominant generative AI solution on the planet. So where is Gemini now? Google has been hesitant to make Gemini publicly available because of the potential repercussions it could have on Google's creativity and business models. For example, Gemini could be used to create realistic fake news articles, social media posts, which could damage Google's reputation. Additionally, Gemini could be used to create competing products and services, which could hurt Google's bottom line. Back in May, the CEO of Google says that once fine-tuned and rigorously tested, Gemini will be available at various sizes and capabilities. He also stated that they've already seen impressive multimodal capabilities not seen in prior models. Gemini is still under development but is rumored to be released this fall, and Google has recently started testing it with select companies, which indicates that it's likely to be released to consumers soon. Google is determined to stay ahead of the competition, and Gemini is Google's secret weapon in the AI race. Gemini is a powerful new AI that has the potential to change the world, and I can't wait to try it out. I mean, after all of this hype with Gemini, Google can't afford to fail at this. It could ruin their reputation in the AI industry, and Google's not one to be left behind. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey Zoe, I love and miss you. I'll see you soon. Mwah. <sighs> I need to take a breath. Okay. This is what happens when I don't take my Adderall. My attention span is zero. Ow, son of a biscuit. <sighs> nope, we're not gonna say that. Um so tired. Oh. Fuck, I'm so tired. <laughs>